Hi, I'm Dustin Hansen, Landfill Superintendent, and today we're at the Sioux Falls Sanitary Landfill. Uh, the landfill is located five miles west on 41st Street. Today we're going to show you the day-to-day -day basics of a landfill and also give you some tips and suggestions um, on how to make your trip more enjoyable. Approaching the landfill from 41st Street, you'll turn south onto the landfill's driveway where the speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Now we want to be good neighbors and to ensure that we maintain that goal, it's imperative to keep the landfill driveway free of litter. So as you drive toward the front gate, you'll see a reminder that all loads must be tarped. A $25 fine will be levied for all untarped loads. Did you know that 1,000 or more vehicles use the landfill driveway every day? So please adhere to the speed limit, be ready to adjust to changing conditions, and be aware of larger vehicles like garbage trucks that share the road. Stay to the right as you approach the scale house. You'll see two scales, a public scale and a commercial contractor scale. The public will stay in the lane closest to the building and please make sure you stop at the gate. Staff will open the gate arm when they're ready to weigh your vehicle. Slowly move forward to the first window where staff will ask you what you have on your load. Now you may have grass and leaves only. You may have construction debris, tires, refrigerators, etc. You'll then be directed to the second window where you'll pay for your load and get instructions on which route to take. The majority of the residential items can be taken to Route 1, 2, or 3. Most people will take Route 1 if they have construction debris, old furniture, old carpet, things like that. Recyclable materials such as tires, appliances, batteries, and items like that can be dropped off at Route 1 as well. Route 1. At the entrance of Route 1, an attendant will again ask you what you have in your load and then direct you to where it needs to be dropped off. As you come up, you'll see several drop-off bins. For ease of offloading, back your vehicle or trailer as close to the bin as you can, remove your tarp, and carefully unload your materials. The farthest bin on the line is designated for metal items. The landfill is able to recycle scrap metal, and that reclamation process saves valuable space in the landfill. The bins are here so that you don't have to go back to where we bury the waste materials and that helps you avoid all the large truck traffic, minimizes flat tires from nails and scraps of metal and debris, and you get to stay on asphalt. Again, these bins are for construction debris and general rubble, like old furniture, old carpet and things like that. If you have any questions on where to dispose of anything, feel free to ask the landfill attendant. The recycling area is also located in Route 1. This is where you can bring your magazines, aluminum, office paper, and things like that. The brown roll-offs are for garbage and household trash. Most residents have a garbage service that takes their trash for them. However, some acreages and outlying areas can bring their trash out to the landfill. Over here is the appliance recycling area. Due to the harmful nature of Freon, we have a building where staff can safely recover and properly dispose of the Freon contained in air conditioners, refrigerators, and freezers. The landfill also has a designated tire disposal area. We have a company that comes in to remove and shred those tires. The byproduct is then combined with coal and burned to generate electricity. The red roll-offs you see are for cardboard only. When disposing of cardboard, please break it down as best you can and put it in the slots. Route 2. If you have yard waste like grass clippings, leaves, or soft garden waste from your vegetable or flower gardens, you'll be asked to use Route 2, which is where our yard waste compost area is located. When you pull up, please dump your waste on the short rows. Staff will then windrow the material, which allows them to turn and aerate the waste to make a compost. Make sure your yard waste does not include brush, branches, wood waste, or plastic bags, as those items will interfere with the composting process. Paper bags will work well in the composting process and are acceptable in this area. The material is turned over, screened to remove any foreign material, and then made available to the public for free. Here's the finished product. As you can see, the landfill produces excellent compost material that works great for your flower and vegetable growing, adding those important soil nutrients to your gardens. If you're here to pick up free compost material, just let them know at the scale house what you want so they can direct you to the right area. Now the compost area is self-service, so don't forget to bring a shovel, buckets, wheelbarrows, whatever you need to get your vehicle loaded. Route 3. Our last stop in the landfill residential area is Route 3. Now this is the tree and wood waste drop-off area where you can bring your brush, wood waste, limbs, stumps, lumber, pallets, things like that. We are able to take all of this material, including nails, and grind that into a mulch. Nails? 
Yes, the grinder has an industrial magnet that will pick out nails and other foreign metals during the mulching process. However, make sure you don't leave any plastic in with your wood product. Please take that to Route 1 for proper disposal and recycling. The wood mulch is also free for the taking, and it's a great material for around flowers and trees. But don't forget, it's self-service too. So bring your shovels and pitchforks to help you load that into your vehicle. Our next stop is the commercial area. This is where the commercial haulers take all of your residential garbage that you leave for them. Large cells like this are very costly to excavate and line, and that makes recycling a very valuable option in so many ways. The commercial area is off limits to the general public because of the large truck traffic and the movement of the large vehicles that we use to pack the material down. Hi, I'm Jessica Lanchin, Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Sioux Falls. The landfill is an extremely valuable resource for the residents of the Five County Region. Just like any other resource, it's essential that we do our part to extend the life of the landfill by being responsible with our waste. We have the opportunity to make daily choices about which products we consume and throw away, and these choices impact the landfill. By choosing products with less packaging, choosing durable products with long lifespans, recycling properly, responsibly discarding electronics and hazardous waste, and using the landfill's recycling resources, we can extend the life of the landfill. If you have questions about how to recycle properly, talk to your waste hauler about what items are accepted. If you have any other questions about how to reduce, reuse, or recycle, visit siouxfalls.org slash green. Together we can do our part to minimize our impact and make sure our landfill lasts for many more years to come. The Household Hazardous Waste Facility and the Environmental Center are located at the corner of Cliff Avenue and Chambers Street, at the bottom of the Cliff Avenue Hill, right across from the street department. To make sure we don't pollute the environment, we don't want hazardous waste to get into the landfill. So to ensure proper disposal, bring it to the Household Hazardous Waste Facility. The Hazardous Waste Facility will take old paints, chemicals, solvents, oil, and other hazardous materials. You can simply drive around the left side of the building and pull up to the hazardous waste door under the overhang. Staff will ask to see your driver's license, ask a few quick questions, and then they'll unload the materials from your vehicle right onto their carts. Some of the other things we handle here at the Household Hazardous Waste Facility are pesticides, antifreeze, fertilizer, auto batteries, paint thinner, putty, aerosol products, and other chemicals. The drop-off is free for residents in the five-county region, Lake, Lincoln, McCook, Minnehaha, and Turner counties. Even with today's modern engineered landfill, these items can leak. So it's important to keep these toxic chemicals out of the landfill so there's no chance of polluting the air or groundwater. In the last 20 years, our use of electronic items has greatly increased. In fact, the Consumer Electronics Association estimates that Americans use 24 electronic items per household. To prevent leaching of harmful chemicals like lead, cadmium, and mercury, the Sioux Falls Sanitary Landfill bans electronic items. This also helps to prolong the life of the landfill by not taking up valuable space. If you can, reuse your working electronic items by donating them to local schools and nonprofits. If your electronic items have reached the end of their life, you can drop them off at the Household Hazardous Waste Facility. Not all electronic items are recyclable. For a comprehensive list and hours of operation, log on to siouxfalls.org slash green. The Environmental Center houses the reuse room. This is the area where staff stores items that they've determined to be reusable. Common items include latex and oil-based paints, automotive products, pesticides, stains, sealers, and varnishes. Product in this area is free to the public. For more information on any of the topics we discussed today, including hours of operation, recyclable products, environmental matters, and how to go green, log on to SiouxFalls.org slash green. Or for general landfill information, go to SiouxFalls.org slash public works.